Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. It is fantastic to have you here. We're working on a keyhole handle integral guard, integral bolster. Chris Dagger. This thing. <laughs> Oh, oh, is this thing whooping me. This is very difficult to do. At the end of last episode, you were seeing me handstand this, and I said it would take a little while. Well, it took a lot of a while. What I was trying to do is sand in this radius here while it was soft before heat treat and sand it in all the way around. Now only to 80 grit or so, and we're only doing it so that while it's soft, we ensure that it is straight, flat, and nicely transitioning in there. Now we also did it top and bottom here. We made sure that this is still central to this material here, still central to the hole that we've made for the keyhole. And this sets us up so that hopefully after heat treat, we can again use those tools that I was using, which I got the idea from, from watching some of Nick Wheeler's knife making tutorials on YouTube, some PSA adhesive. Thank you to Julian for the tip on the PSA abrasive. But these blocks here with a radius on the edge and this one here, which I made up, you saw me make it up on the Instagram story. So make sure you follow me at Alex Steele so that we could get in here and ensure that with the correct radius, we were able to sand this section here square to that section with a neatly flowing radius, which is good. And it was difficult. Something that I've been really working hard at to get better at has been just doing things right first time so that I can make a product that I am happy with when it's done. Because when you don't do things right the first time, there are always going to be things that you're not quite happy about in the finished product. And that's never a good thing. It's always worth doing it right first time. And I'm trying to beat that into my head head somehow, and these tough projects are doing a great job at doing that. And speaking of doing things right first time, I kept wanting to just, oh, let me just go into the heat treat. Let me just go into the heat treat. Let me just go into the heat treat. You know, it's me trying to rush again. So what we're going to do now is we are going to lay out, design, cut, and not finish grind, but rough grind the keyhole for the keyhole integral. start by scribing ourselves a center line. And since I certainly like to talk the talk about doing things right first time and sometimes fail to walk the walk, what we're going to do is we're actually going to put it in the mill and we're going to now mill this back face. I should have done it before blue die coming, but we're going to mill this face so we have a flat, square, perfect reference surface to work off of. see we made a template out of some shim stock which meant we could work along our center line and scribe out both halves of our keyhole. Now what we're going to do is cut them out. The trouble is is that we're going to do that with one of my least favorite tools in the workshop which is an angle grinder. We're going to use an abrasive disc to cut this and we could destroy it. Oh my goodness. If there's ever a time that I did not want to slip with an angle grinder, this is it. Actually, no, most times slipping with an angle grinder is very bad. You end up with an angle grinder disc in your leg. That's not good. But I don't want to break this. So 
with a 36 grit one inch wide ribbed belt on our one inch platen with the cutaway, we were indeed able to grind out pretty close to finish our keyhole. Now, it occurred to me after the fact that most people make a keyhole with a convexity in here instead of a concavity, uh, which makes it easier to grind because you can do a sweeping grind. I was having to grind this with the corner of the platen. It wasn't as bad as it could have been. It certainly means that it's going to be more difficult to get a consistent radius. I think we're going to be able to do it with enough care, enough attention to detail, and enough, uh, enough fussing at a higher grit later on once it's been heat treated. Because after two or three days of just being on the precipice of being ready for the heat treat, being so close to saying now is the time, now is the time. We have nice sanded good radius surfaces, no hard corners to worry about. By hard corner I mean hard 90s. You know, we shouldn't be getting any breaks anywhere. We have enough excess material proud of our scribe lines to, once it's hardened, be able to break through the scale there from the hardening and bring it to the final sizes. Obviously, it's a little difficult with the drilled hole. It is what it is. With these holes, it is what it is. They're gonna scale up, hopefully not too badly. So I've gotta be careful on how hot I'm getting it. It should be fine if we get it to the correct temperatures. If we go too crazy with our temperatures and I start getting into an orange heat, we're gonna end up oxidizing it a lot more. We're gonna run three normalizing cycles, one hardening cycle. I'm gonna be heating up the backside first because this is gonna be a little mass of heat where this, this will keep its heat longer than the tips say. So we're gonna heat this up, flip it around, and then work it around and, uh, and, and we'll be doing our quench holding it from this way and uh, I think things should go rather well. So, on to the heat treat. Again, second attempt, hard here, perfect, but it digs in. It is too soft here, it hasn't hardened fully. I don't think I had an even enough heat, my bad. Back into the forge we go. We are going to give it a third attempt with the hardening after a little normalizing cycle. Hopefully we'll get this thing to an even hardness the whole way, this time around. Okay, so we've gone for hardening cycle number three. Uh, there was an issue though. We went for the magnetic warp straighten again, but I don't know how much that did. Oh boy. Oh, that's a warp. Ha! Ha! Okay, we have an eighth inch of warp across this. Now, is it hard though? That's another important question. So, moment of truth. Do we have hardness? Ha! Yes. Okay, this file is not touching it. That's good. Woo! Third time. Was the charm apart from the warp? Now we're gonna temper this. I'm gonna see if it'll fit in the oven. And if it will, once it's up to temperature, I think we're gonna try and lock it on the mag plate again and see if that straightens it. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Worst comes to worst. We go for attempt number four with the hardening. So we'll see, does it fit? Ah. Uh. Aha, yes! Thank goodness for that. Right, so this has been here an hour or so. Now the best thing would have probably been to have a fixture that's straightening it while it's tempering, but uh, 
I want to see if this will do anything at all. It's a big warp, but we'll try. So I guess uh, we'll see if this does anything, even though it's not in the oven. Maybe even while it's a tempering temperature, while it's cooling down from that, we can straighten that warp. Maybe even better, I can shim it. Maybe that'll better straighten the warp. Who knows? We'll see, we'll find out. And so now it's been a little while and this has cooled down and we will see, has this done anything? Taking it from a temporary, oh. Ah, uh, well, that has done nothing. And so that means that on tomorrow's episode, you're gonna see me trying to make myself up a jig to temper it in that oven straight. So we're gonna do a shimmed temper. You've seen me do this on the rapier. Obviously I have a much larger jig for that. We're gonna make a small jig tomorrow. Hopefully do a shim temper. Hopefully you get this thing straight. So make sure you tune in for that. But before you leave, I have a book recommendation from my friend Liam Hoffman. You've heard me talk about him a lot. The magnet trick that I was just doing is something I picked up from one of his YouTube videos. His YouTube channel is really worth checking out. He is an extremely talented bladesmith. He knows his stuff and he has written this book. He has asked me to promote this book and I am thrilled to do just that. I read this book it is easy reading it is really really informative stuff what is this book it's called forged it's a guide to becoming a blacksmith and it tackles a side of becoming a blacksmith whether your hobby career it tackles a side of that that's rarely ever been covered in books which is the side of how to get your shop set up how to teach yourself what is the amount of money that you have to spend to create one type of workshop over another and if you're interested in getting into the craft of blacksmithing or knife making which I really hope you are I I really hope that you go to the link below. There's an Amazon link below. You can go and buy this book. It's a great way to get some incredibly useful information that's hard to find about setting up your first shop and learning how to teach yourself. It's a great way to support Liam, who's a young entrepreneur who is killing it. And it's also, thankfully, we teamed up to, uh, to promote this. It's a great way to support this channel. Highly recommend you get this book. Fantastic book. I wish it was around when I was starting to blacksmith. I'm pleased that it's around now that you are the link is in the description below. Thank you, Liam, for writing this great book. Thank you guys for watching. It's been a pleasure, and I'm looking forward to seeing you tomorrow on the next episode. Don't forget to grab that book and have a fantastic day. And uh, I do hope that you get out to your own workshop and make something. And if you're not going to do that, getting this book will hopefully be a little extra motivation for you.